Yeah, it's I've nuts. watched it twice. You think that there? You think that not even a science fiction writer could dream up some of the weird life forms, the weird things going on down there? It's fascinating. It's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. And and are we on? Are we live? Yes. We're talking about Chile. Yeah, viva Chile. Viva Chile. We're talking about the volcano that just erupted. I know. What I'm volcano? Let's go. Yeah, volcano just erupted in Chile. Long dormant. Really? Now, now alive. last time it well, last time it popped was '84. I didn't know the Chilean coast had any active volcanism or geothermal anything. The Andes are at our back door. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I thought the Andes was like a rift mountain range that was just pushed out no by way. plates. I didn't know there was vol. There's a lot of geology yeah, at work here, guys. Volcanoes. Is there really down, volcanic? Down, down. There's about 3,000 volcanoes in Chile. Oh, the Ring of Fire around the Pacific. So they must be going around the Chilean coast as well. Yeah. yeah, I don't read the Hobbits, but sure. No, <laughs> that was a, no, I don't, no. I can. Can I use the word ring without you guys thinking that it's? <laughs> no, right. I can't. Right. I can't. can't. You want to sit on my side this time? Let you me. You can sit. have the comfy chair. Well, I want the captain's chair this time. And oh, and what's over here? Oh, uh, one of the funniest and dirtiest mouse pads in LA. Dirty mouse pad, dirty. What a dirty birdie that Gaston is. What a dirty birdie. Keep talking. What a dirty birdie. Keep going. Who's a dirty birdie? Is that better? Is that better? Nickname changed? Dismiss. Yeah. Who's a dirty birdie? Like Are you that. a dirty birdie? Anybody remember the Benny Hill show? No, before my time. Birdie, birdie in the sky. How Drop some cargo in me eye. Is, is the audio better, folks? Aren't we lucky cows don't fly? <laughs> Anybody remember Benny Hill? No. And they run around in high speed. They speed up the film. Almost as good as Roger Miller on the Robin Hood soundtrack. I'm going into the whole little do 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 the whole thing. Are we gonna sing some Roger Miller classics from Robin Hood? I hope not. I think we'll stick with the Benny Hill references. Benny Hill reference spoofed in V for Vendetta. You might remember that bit when they're doing the late night talk show. And Stephen Fry's character, long before he would become the master of Lake Town, Stephen Fry doing, you know, a little Benny Hill spoof. You guys don't remember this. Uh, anybody? What's up with Cliff? Hi, everybody. Was oh, hey. Oh, hello. -show? I didn't see you there. Hello. Welcome to Torn Tuesday. This is your weekly dose of all things Hobbit. We are live on Ustream, and then we upload this to YouTube. The, uh, just search for The One Ring on YouTube, and then we have a podcast on iTunes. We just take the audio and put this on iTunes, so you can listen to us on, your, you can. Uh, on your commute. Uh, sometimes I don't get to post all episodes because you know, we're all volunteers, and nobody makes money, and mm -hmm. sometimes we need to make money and, and prioritize. So we encourage you to watch. If you can't watch live, that's okay. Sometimes Sub subscribe to us on YouTube and subscribe to us on iTunes. Sometimes you just get to it later on and subscribe to us there at those locations. Yes, sir. Precisely, sir. Well said, sir. I am going to tweet our little link that we're live. Yes, I'm already tweeting something, but not on the official Torn account. You guys are far this time. What the heck? Isn't it great? This this is our whole set. This is our whole set. Are we further in the frame? The frame is further. Do you want to do you want to bring the frame in a little I'll, closer? I'll put it to the chat room. Do you guys want to see <laughs> us closer, or do you want to see all, all the magnificence? Thank you, Scottish. Right. I mean, you've got E.T., you've got Daft Punk, you've got uh, you got a lot of cool stuff here. You, you, are you sure you guys just want to see us close? <laughs> you want to see this in high frame rate, so you can count every little tiny pore. And I don't want that. on Justin's cute little face. That's, I don't want that. God knows my pores are much smaller, much smaller, and much harder to see than his. <laughs> Anyways, full of laughs, full of jokes today. I'm asking this guy if he remembers Benny Hill. No. The Benny Hill Show. You can say anything to me about Faulty Towers, but you and and you know Monty Python, but you can't talk to me about Benny Hill. 
This I find odd. Odd in the extreme. Any of you guys out there know the Benny Hill Show? Host to your favorite stars. Yes? Well, we just got Anybody? a text message on the hotline, 53064Frodo, saying, I love the wide look, wide angle look. Uh, mm. You should keep it like that. But we got people in the chat room saying, uh, long shot's cool, a little closer maybe. Well. A little closer? I, well, I, I, I don't know who to believe. If, if. It reminds me of an old Groucho Marx joke where he's uh, hugging this beautiful, beautiful uh, screen starlet. She's a lovely woman. Groucho Marx and her passionate embrace. And she says, closer, hold me closer. And he says, if I get any closer, I'll get right through you. I'll pass right through you. It's, anyway, whatever. Um, Let's take a look around. This is, this is, this is the, the upstairs above the Nerdist Theater. We've got yes. so much stuff. This is, this is Mission Control right there crazy right like and then that's all of our cables and that's all of our gear for comic cons and wonder con which is coming up this is just there's so many amazing things in this pile of boxes like valuable valuable things huh quite interesting it's more than an attic it's actually a, it's the history of, of it's, pop culture it's like a, a compendium library even though it's not sorted out or presented as a compendium library. But it, there are things in this attic, works of art, original sketches, illustrations, um, storyboards from animators. There's tchotchkes, collector's items, imported toys, imported statuary, uh, uh, really, really vintage collectibles from the from the 60s and 70s. And lots of Tintin. They love Tintin. There's so much... Uh, uh, oh gosh, yes, Tintin. Super fun there's stuff. A, he, he, there's a whole case of Tintin. A whole case of Tintin downstairs. In a tin case. Which oh, is hey. cool. Making a funny there. The, yes, the, the okay. Cool, the cool thing about Meltdown Comics, uh, the center of all geekdom in, in LA and uh, and the home of the Nerdist podcast, yeah. is that they're, they've always been huge fans of Tintin and Peter Jackson's next film is Tintin. I don't know if you you guys knew that, but Peter Jackson's next film is Tintin. There's going to be another Tintin film? They were the they they already they signed the contracts before they even made the first one. It was for two pictures. Steven Spielberg would direct the first one and Peter and Jackson Peter would, would direct the second one. Which one do you think is going to be more uh, So Peter Jackson effective is is on the hook to do Tintin before he does anything else. And uh, so we don't know what experimentation he's doing with motion capture. We or have whatnot. to look forward with Andy. We have to look forward to Andy Circus obviously being involved in this, can't we? He's one of the lead characters. I don't know. Yes, of course. What do you mean you don't know? Where are you getting this information? It, it's all online. Ain't it cool news? Does anyone go to Ain't It Cool? We love Harry Knowles. I love Harry Knowles, but uh, thank you. Look at that. You fixed the frame, Je uh, Justin. It's excellent. Excellent. Very, very good. Very, very good. You guys uh, happy? Yes, is everyone happy? <laughs> is everyone happy to see us a little bit closer? Not quite the level of light that we need, but here's some, here's some more light. What did Gandalf say in Fellowship? Perhaps we can spare a little more light. Shall we have cocktails, everyone? Let's continue the party from last week. It's or, only been a week. Has it been two weeks? It's only been a week. It's been a week and two days, actually. It's been a week and two days. Did you dust the dust bunnies out of this glass? I did. I blew at blew at them. Okay. So we we toast. Cheers. To a great party, and we toast today to Leonard Nimoy, uh, the ballad of Bilbo Baggins forever in our heart. Never forgotten, for many, many reasons, Leonard Nimoy, who is a beloved Ringer fan and a Tolkien fan, as much as he is part of our lives through the Gene Roddenberry uh, universe and all the great things that he has done. You know, my greatest regret now uh -huh. is not going to see Leonard Nimoy doing that one-man show that he was doing uh, playing Van Gogh. That's right. I was so I mean, he did this uh, a number of decades ago, and he was getting ready to do this one-man show again. Um, Really, cheers to you. Cheers. To Leonard Nimoy. To the only blue wizard that we've ever known. He wore the blue shirt. 
He was the only blue wizard. He was the blue wizard. The blue wizard we always wanted was has been in front of us the entire time. Listen to this. This is something that that our friend Mark Ordesky yes. retweeted from Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy said this at an interview at MIT last year. He said, find out what it is that touches you most deeply. Pursue it. Learn about it. Explore it. Expand on it. Live with it and nurture it. Find your own way and make your own contribution. That's excellent advice. Excellent advice from Leonard Nimoy. To the man. To the Vulcan. Live long and prosper. Oh. These cups still hold up. These are Fellowship of the Ring cups, not just the second movie or the third movie. The, this is from the very first movie. And do you remember where these cups came from? Burger King. That's right. And remember, I got a complete set. And it had lights on the bottom. Mine still do. Mine don't. I have, I have another one over there. I think there was four cups and I only have three. <sighs> and uh, this one's Aragorn. That one's Legolas. Uh, actually, no. This is Liv Tyler. This is the Arwen oh, glass. Oh, that's Arwen. Yeah, there's the Liv Tyler. And there's three rings. But they're all, they're not elven rings, there's three one rings. Oh, I never noticed that. I thought column. that was just a nice script. But you, yeah, it is, but they're actually rings with the, the horrible ring script, the horrifying gloom and doom of the ring verse. Ellen Design is in the chat room. She, she did the lighting at the party, which looked wonderful. If you guys yes, did. saw, watch the main stage, that was all of Ellen's lighting. And everyone has been commenting recently that the main stage looked like a real professional thing and I have to thank Alan yes. because we just point the cameras at people uh, so Ellen if you stop by today please come upstairs uh, tell, Ellen, tell them you're here to, to talk, talk to us and come upstairs and say hi to yes, everybody. Yes, Ellen, if you, well, that would be a really wonderful surprise. Ellen, are you actually thinking about coming to say hello today? That'd be great. Here you go. Nothing but praise that I heard from wall to wall amongst all of our organizers and our staff saying how great the lighting design was. Yes. And this was one thing I actually heard from someone else in the distance. Thank God we actually had real lighting this time. You know, I think it was someone from Emerald Rose. <laughs> that was <laughs> wonderful. That was one of the musicians who said, oh, thank God we actually had real lighting design and real lights for us. Um, her crew did some rather death-defying um, uh, they trick. set up all They the had to climb up to the top of the rafters physically to 50 hang. 50 feet in the air. Yeah, very dangerous job. Not something you could just use a, a lift to lift someone up. They were climbing up those ropes and hanging things from the rafters to make sure the lights were excellent. Ellen, you have a great working group of people, great looking team, and great hard working team as well. So you can watch the archive. Uh, I'm trying to get you gotta, uh, you, all of the... I'm trying to get all the chat comments. YouTube supposedly saved all the chat comments. 22,000 comments in the chat. Oh, dear. It was, really? It was running so fast the whole night. It, it was pretty wild. You know, uh, speaking of, of, of Leonard Nimoy, I, I have a story. Yes. I have a story. Because I remember um, my family used to... I remember growing up as a kid, and my family used to work on the weekends uh, at this place over near Woodland Hills in Calabasas uh, that hosted company picnics. It was a big ranch out there called the Calamigos Ranch. And they hosted company picnics and after parties and rap parties. Yes. And I remember, I think it was the fourth movie, the fourth Star Trek movie, third or fourth Star Trek movie that had just wrapped filming. And uh, Star Trek, uh, Paramount decided to do the rap party. and. You know, my dad was MC, and my uncle was doing that, and so I came along, and I'm, you know, set six six years old, seven years old, mm. and I got to pour the ice cream. They had a little soft serve, and so I got to make cones. I'm little seven years old. Child labor laws, I guess, didn't exist in the 80s, uh, and, <laughs> and I don't even know if I got paid. Um, and it was it was super fun because uh, I never really, I, I thought Star Trek was cheesy because all I, I was never allowed to watch the movies uh, and I, they were on, it was on TV the reruns I thought it was cheesy but uh, Leonard Nimoy comes up and mm -hmm. they say hey and my dad goes hey do you know who this is and this is Mr. Spock I'm, and and uh, and and my dad goes you remember this guy and uh, I said yeah and I try you know six years old I'm, and I try to do it. I, I try to do the Vulcan thing, and like every, really? every time I separate two fingers, 
like three fingers separate. And then I try to go the other way, and these fingers separate. I can't. You couldn't. I, I couldn't do it. And Leonard Nimoy's right there. And now you know, six year old kid. And and so what? What Leonard Nimoy does, and mm. and I I I I'll never forget this because this is the first time I ever did it. Like Leonard Nimoy took his huge hand up to my <coughs> little one. Really. And then, and he, he, he held his fingers against mine. He's like, push again. He said, push against my hand. And, and then he opened his fingers as I pushed against his hand. Yes. Really? And then, so once he had it, he let go like that. And you had it. And I had it. <laughs> and, and that was the very first time really, you've... I ever had my fingers in the, in the Vulcan thing. In the proper and, way. In the proper way. And, and that was courtesy of Leonard Nimoy himself and and you know it's just little moments that like that there's tons of people that go to Star Trek conventions and and all these things that have similar stories of his kindness and generosity and he he really embraced the the fandom that that brought him all this success but you know you don't remember a lot when you're 6 years old but he sure as heck remembered that I can't I really really am surprised and very very pleased that you remembered that Thank you for sharing that with us, guys. That that was very and, nice. And, that was a very lovely memory. And and and, and I really appreciate and his, that. His wife was there with him, Susan, uh, uh, Susan ne Bay Nimoy. And yes, uh, my my grandparents got on with her, and I you know we we used to ha they used to come over for to the my grandparents' house for dinner like you know every couple of years just you know the old catch up whatever. Yes. Uh, and uh, Susan. Uh, sometimes she just came alone because you know Leonard was working or whatever, and I just remember Susan Nimoy visiting uh, with my grandmother, and uh, really she's just a a warm soul, and uh, I didn't know this until later, but Susan Nimoy, uh, hmm. Susan Bay Nimoy, so her maiden name was Bay, and turns out that her i think her nephew they came to the house like once or twice they called him mikey like hey mikey hey i'm bringing mikey with me and uh, mikey was older than me yes by 10 years old so we like tried to play basketball and i i had like used two hands to shoot you know i was a little eight seven eight year old kid and and mikey was more athletic and that's it well fast forward x amount of years mikey ne My mikey bay is Michael Bay. Little Mikey Bay. Really? Is that was the little kid, Mikey Bay. Is Michael Bay. Now he's grown up. And and yeah, so that's that's the connection. Michael Bay is related to Leonard Nimoy. Isn't that so strange and funny when you stop to think about it? And maybe that's the connection why Leonard Nimoy actually ended up doing uh, voice work on the well, Transformers. Well, th th there's a funny story because because he did, by the way. Separately of separately of the personal connections, I ended up working with. Uh, Transformers on, on some of the viral marketing of it. Mm -hmm. And so I was on the set the day uh, that they were doing, this was the third Transformers. Uh, it was in Playa, so they were shooting in Playa Vista. Indeed. And yes, I was I living over there so I could just walk to set. I remember this story. And, yes. and I remember the day Michael Bay came to set and he's in a good mood. And if, if you heard the stories about Michael Bay, he's intense. That's all. He's intense, uh, and and he says that's diplomacy for you. And he says, uh, 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 Uncle Leonard is going to do the voice of one of our dino uh, or one of our robots this time. Mm -hmm. And he was so ecstatic. I mean, that was the only day I never heard Michael Bay yell, like he was just <laughs> in seven, because all the yeah. studios. You know, Michael Bay's done Pearl Harbor, Armageddon, The yes. Rock. He, I mean, he oh, yeah. it, major, major movies with Sean Connery and everything else. Yeah, uh, and, and our very own Liv Tyler. And nobody, uh, and he would never, he would never ask Leonard to do a movie. He's like, he's family, and. The budget that we have for this movie, I want to spend on explosions, not cast. Mm -hmm. And Leonard is such an accomplished actor that he demands his his rate mm -hmm. is very large, and he didn't want to disrespect his family member by lowballing. You know, it, it's kind of like you know, it, it's kind of like it, 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 if if your cousin is a plumber and you're like, hey, you know, our entire kitchen blew up. Can you replace all the plumbing in our house? can't but not charge us like it's kind of awkward you don't want to do the work 
It's dirt. You know, it, it, it's a lot of work for yes. not a lot of money. Yes. And it's not something you want to expend on your family. Uh, so, so the studio went around Michael Bay and, and reached out to Leonard Nimoy and said, "Hey, Michael's doing this Transformers movie, and and, and would you like to join and do a little thing on the side? And but this is this is all the money that we have. We'd like to waive your rate. Now, there's similar stories of our dearly departed Robin Williams, who had such a strong relationship with director Terry Gilliam, he would waive his entire rate and even waived getting his proper name in billing uh, so that his name, Robin Williams, is not in the credits. And that's how Robin Williams came in to work on The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. That's right. And he became the King of the Moon, one of the most brilliant, crazy characters in any Terry Gilliam fantasy flick. And there it was, Robin Williams, no billing, no credit, not even at the end of the film he didn't have a credit I don't think uh, or he used a fake pseudonym but that's just a bypass and, and having the production have to pay millions and millions of extra dollars for Leonard or in this case Robin to do the, the project and then Terry Gilliam fast forward to this year Terry Gilliam paid back the favor and Terry Gilliam is actually in Jupiter Ascending and he's he's the crazy guy that gives him his passport uh, oh yeah and that's and so Terry. That's Terry. Terry he's yeah. got a big beard and everything. He's like, yes. a, you know, looks at you funny. So Terry Gilliam, and I don't think he's credited or anything, but, but yeah, that's, uh, but, uh, uh, it, it, you know, I, Leonard came on and did the voice. No, Leonard did the voice of, in the third Transformers film, mm -hmm. and you, you know, such an iconic voice in in a movie of iconic voices. Yeah, of course, yes. Uh, you know, the yeah. Optimus Prime and and Megatron. Hugo Weaving is Megatron, so that's the connection. Mm -hmm. Hugo. Hugo Weaving has done a movie with Leonard Nimoy. How our, about that? Our own Elrond. Le Leonard Nimoy played Sentinel Prime and in uh, the Dark of the Moon film, which I didn't see um, because after the racist robots showed up in Transformers 2, I just stopped watching any of the Transformers movies. I just didn't want to have anything to do with it, period. Forgive me for drawing attention to another aspect of Leonard Nimoy's storied career. We talk a lot about what a great actor Mr. Nimoy was. We talk about our overwhelming fondness for Leonard, his character, especially Mr. Spock, who has been reiterated many, many times. Mm -hmm. And um, in, even in the J.J. Abrams reboot, uh, uh, reboots those films, there's Mr. Spock still playing, you know, first timeline, you know, Mr. Spock before it got changed and became the secondary timeline Mr. Spock, yep. which we know is Zachary Quinto, who's doing a wonderful job with the character, by the way. But And so Hugh, Hugo Weaving was Megatron in the first three Transformers films, and if you remember the third Transformers film, Megatron gets killed for the umpteenth time, but in the fourth movie, the most recent one that came out last year, yes. uh, Megatron is is just a head, and they clone his body and create these cubes, and and they create a new Transformer based on Megatron called Galvatron. Yes. And now Galvatron is now voiced by Frank Welker, who was the original voice of Megatron in the cartoon series. That's right. That's right. Yes. So because the the, the fans were were kind of uh, before the movies came out, the fans were kind of irate. They're like, how dare you cast act famous actors instead of our, our our cherished cartoon voices frank welker and uh who, who's the voice of optimus prime tell um, me you don't know who the voice of optimus uh, prime I'm, is i'm, I'm try, trying to remember <laughs> um, but but you know but they got him anyways they got him yes they um, did and then they got hugo weaving to do uh megatron and so hugo weaving is currently out of the transformers movies um and we yes. hope we hope to see him in more stuff now, you know, now that the Hobbit's over and everything, it's it's time to see more Hugo Weaving. Uh, you know, I was I was actually kind of surprised that Hugo Weaving was not in Jupiter Ascending. I thought he would have shown up for sure in another, you know... I think he would have made a great uh, father figure in, to in Eddie Redmayne. Peter Cullen is the name you'd Peter forgotten. Peter Cullen. Can never forget Peter Cullen. But, uh, yeah, Hugo Weaving uh, and um, Leonard Nimoy side by side. But imagine... Um, and Imagine. Hugo Weaving was in Captain America. Hugo as Red Skull, but Hugo Weaving not showing up in a in a Wachowski's film? Shock. Absolute shock. So if if you if you go to Box Office Mojo and you look up an actor by the numbers, look at the numbers. Hugo Weaving was in Lord of the Rings trilogy, <clears throat> Hobbit trilogy, Matrix trilogy, Transformers trilogy. Yep. 
everything. So that's V, v for Vendetta. But that's four trilogy mo series. Four trilogy series. Yes. He's got to be one of the most bankable stars net by now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've 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 shared that little bit of wisdom before with all you fanboys and fangirls out there who might not know, but. It's not going to be six degrees of seven, uh, Kevin Bacon anymore. No. It's, it's actually six degrees of Hugo, Hugo Weaving. Hugo Weaving. The whole thing is really, you know what? There's a funny, funny comment. It's, it's just going to change any the, day now. In the it's chat six room. degrees of Hugo Weaving. He's in everything. Yes. Marvel 7 in the chat room says, I was thinking about Vigo. I always get Vigo and Hugo mixed up. Ah. <laughs> Oh my that's gosh, that's funny. cute. That's and, and, cute. And, and, and that brings up an, another thing we tweeted today. What if Royd Tolkien and Billy Boyd started a band? They would be Royd and Boyd. <laughs> <laughs> funny. Or Royd and Boyd. Royd me Boyd. Oh gosh. Wouldn't that be fun? I would go see a band called Royd me Boyd. <laughs> that's right? so funny. I, I would love it. You, you can, I, I, I can see it. <laughs> The, the, Boyd and Boyd. The, the fact that um, Mr. Nimoy has done as many things in the geek world as visibly as we know him and have always known and adored Leonard. Um, Wasn't Thorin in Captain America? Uh, Was Richard Armitage in the first Captain America? I don't film? know, but we'll look that up. But let me finish this thought. Yes. A lot of people don't talk about Leonard Nimoy as a director, and that's something I wanted to mention. Um, I really want to eulogize him on today's show. I want to do it properly. Yep. And I want to talk. I, I cannot compare with this brilliant memory that you have, uh, having met Leonard Nimoy at six years old, and letting him show you how to do the Vulcan hand movement uh, and that shape with your hand. But that's really brilliant. But I can't top that. But I'm I sorry I opened up with a with that can't, story. Can't beat I, that story. It's brilliant. But you want to find out who's brilliant? Take a look at some of the things that Leonard Nimoy directed. Not only did he direct quite a few things um, on the Star Trek side, I mean, everyone's favorite and the most commercially successful Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. He directed, he directed Star Trek III, you know, The Search mm -hmm. for Spock, and yep. um, he took his name off the title credits because he didn't want anybody to know whether or not he was absolutely going to reappear as the character in the film. Yep. He directed uh, Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. Then the next one that was directed by Bill Shatner which was called The Final Frontier, that was complete disaster. Complete disaster after the great... So there's quite a bit of little unspoken rivalry, or maybe it is spoken, but uh, Leonard Nimoy would direct great, great successful things, um, and Bill Shatner could not direct his way out of a hat. That's too bad. But I love Bill Shatner. I'm not ragging on him too much. But let me tell you something. Leonard Nimoy... Leonard Nimoy directed a Holocaust survivors movie. Did you know that? It was called Never Forget. It was a TV movie. Hmm. It was filmed for television. You could call it a telefilm. It was called Never Forget. I saw it when it first was broadcast in 1991 uh, when I was living in Chicago. And Leonard Nimoy is in court trying to prove to the court the existence and the proof from his memory that things that happened in the concentration camps really, really did happen because it's a courtroom drama against an activist group who are anti-Holocaust, who are trying to rewrite, you know, um, uh, the Holocaust uh, um, yep. and its records and its history. And uh, he's in a courtroom drama that he directed called Never Forget. And it's really, really fascinating to think about um, what a great talent. He was on Gunsmoke. He was on the original Twilight Zone That's series right. back in the 50s. You know, so was Bill Shatner. Rod, Rod Serling. Yeah, before Star Trek, you would see you know, uh, Leonard Nimoy in these cowboy TV shows, Gunslinger, and, and he was in an episode of The Twilight Show, the great anthology series from Rod Serling. Uh, what's the hottest new sci-fi anthology series that's on right now? Broken Mirror. Really, really hot. Um, and really interesting science fiction anthology Black series. Mirror. Black Mirror. Right? Is it Broken Mirror or Black Mirror? Black Mirror. Black the, Mirror. The That's Briti the one. The British show. That's the one. That's yeah. the one. But my last, my last and most incredible memory of, of Leonard Nimoy, and, and I can't tell you, I had, I had a bad moment. When Robin Williams died, and I'm sitting there in this government office trying to fill out paperwork, and I break down in tears when I just got the news that Robin Williams had died. Same thing happened to me. I was at work. 
I was trying to open up early at work and get everything ready uh, before 9.15 when the doors opened and all the customers would come in. And I'm working, trying to concentrate, and I can't because I just have these tears coming down my face when, when I got the news that Leonard was gone. Yep. But um, I will never, ever forget Leonard Nimoy's, uh, you know, conversations about the whales and, and the whale tank that they built on the Paramount lot when they were shooting um, Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. And they had a lot of location scenes in San Francisco. They had a lot of interesting stuff to photograph for that film. But I remember watching all the behind the scenes and having Leonard talk about how they had a real challenge building a water tank to have, you know, that fake uh, uh, animatronic whale, that humpback whale, that was such... Those humpback whales were a big, important part of the plot of Star Trek IV, uh, The Voyage Home. You'll remember that. But um, I, I remember very fondly uh, thinking he is really a talented director. He has got so much to worry about dealing with the franchise, the way that people are, you know, the way they're looking for mistakes. When you're in, a, in the director's chair in front of something like Star Trek, which is a big, 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 world-renowned franchise, um, it's like, you know, how hard it is for him to go from being the actor, the actor that everyone knows and adores, to him switching gears and being responsible for all the storytelling and the way everything is presented on screen. And he handled it with Elan. And that was a word that Leonard Nimoy taught me that I'd never heard before. He had a certain elan with the way he dealt with the pressure and the things on set. And I, I definitely remember that about Leonard Nimoy. And I highly recommend you guys investigate some of his other work, some of his past appearances on uh, old TV shows. Mm -hmm. even, uh, even going way, 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 way back Oh, look at this. Look at how far back. I mean, he I'm, on, did, he I'm did on IMDb. He was in... The Outer Limits. He that, was in... That wonderful remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers in 78. That's the best version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers with Donald Sutherland, Leonard Nimoy. Go back to that because that's a really, really, really good movie. But he was in Columbo. He was in Night Gallery. Another Rod Serling mm -hmm. uh, horror sci-fi uh, anthology series. I love that. He was in Night Gallery. Gunsmoke. He was in Get Smart. He, yeah. did, he did TV comedy. He did so many great things. But look at some of Leonard Nimoy's directing work. And I tell you, you will find that, that courtroom drama mm -hmm. about the Holocaust survivor, you'll find that movie Never Forget very cerebral and very interesting. It's worth looking at. Because he, he was an worth interesting fellow at. and he, he, he supported the arts. You know, a lot of the news people are talking about his his million dollar donation to the Griffith Observatory, which you can yes. go see a show inside the Nimoy Theater. Yes, that's uh, right. And and there's a huge underground learning space, which is wonderfully built um, uh, over at Griffith Observatory here in Griffith Park, uh, Los Angeles. But not only that, he supported the arts. I mean, he would show up to art shows and gallery shows in many cities: New York, Chicago, here in LA. And he would, he would, he would patronize, patronize the arts. Yes. He would, he would buy. It was a pieces. true patron of the arts. He would buy actual pieces, both from established artists and up and comers. Um, and he's got a wonderful collection. And you know, pe pe because he's Leonard Nimoy, you know, he would. People would offer him a lot of stuff, and he's like, "No, no. You, this is you. I want you." He, he would tell people, "I want you to succeed, and this is my way of helping you." Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. and, and, and that's it, it was. It, he never shied away from anything. I mean, even in the car commercial that he did a year ago, where he made fun of the Bilbo Baggins singing the ballad of Bilbo Baggins in, in the Buick. I think it was a Buick or Cadillac. Uh, or something? No, no, no. Actually, it was a, a, it, was a it was a Saturday morning uh, uh, children's family variety show called Malibu U. The original, and then he and then original he, show. He did oh, it. then he ended up doing yeah. Then he redid that and spoofed Last himself year. in the car commercial with none other than Zachary Quinto, yeah. who appeared in the commercial with him. Um, no finer words were said to put and, an epigraph on the, this whole conversation because we have some other fun things to talk about today besides and, 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 saying farewell to Leonard Nimoy. The, 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 fu the funny part is that uh, I, I, I didn't hold it against anybody but this last weekend you, mm. don't, you don't know how many people like pulled me aside and said Hey, what does L L A P mean? Really? Because everybody, really? like on Twitter and Facebook, everybody was like L L 
A P. And, and I can't and, believe anybody would ask. And what, not know what no? Because people was like Leonard L L. It was his middle name, Leonard Leopold. Like what? Uh, so so there were there were, a bunch of my friends were like. What L L A P? And you disowned these friends, didn't you? No, I we we encourage all fandom and look. And, and I'm the first to admit I don't know everything about Tolkien and Hobbit, so uh, like I'm not gonna make any. Yeah, but else if, some, feel if bad. someone starts reciting the Ring verse to you, you know, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them. Anybody just mentions a little bit of Tolkien. Yeah, but L L A P. That's a Twitter thing. Uh, that I, was his Twitter thing. And this yeah, is, but unless you this, followed him. This was Leonard Nimoy's very active Twitter account that he was very active with, you know, in his later years. Mm -hmm. And one of our members of our chat room has already uh, typed in exactly what I wanted to mention. The very last thing that uh, Leonard Nimoy uh, tweeted before he died was an epigraph. And he wrote something quite beautiful. He said, a life is like a garden. Perfect moments can be had but not preserved, except in memory. L-L-A-P. Hashtag L-L-A-P. No hashtag. He signed all of his tweets and text messages L-L-A-P. But he didn't hashtag it. He just, this it, was the most sad and beautiful, beautiful thing, and I actually started weeping. I wept openly when I read that on the day that he died. Now, down there on Hollywood Boulevard, there's wreaths and flowers mm -hmm. and a whole shrine of candles and and uh, Star Trek tchotchkes there on the Walk of Fame, right where uh, Roddenberry and William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy and DeForest Kelly, they all have their stars all in the same spot right there. I believe it's at the corner of um, uh, Hollywood and Whitley, or is it Cherokee? Cherokee, I think. Yeah, it might be Cherokee, on the, on the north side of the street. Uh, but I'm definitely going to go there and see if I can do a couple of interesting it's, it's, Vine videos. It's, it's going to be an there. interesting year at WonderCon and Comic Con and all the conventions this year. You know the the, the Star Trek tribute, uh, uh, and I, I bet you we see more Vulcans uh, this year yes. at at all the cons and some some special tributes. Yes, uh, there will to, be. You know. Now that there's no more Hobbit movies and no more Leonard Nimoy, it's kind of like there's a there, a, a lot of fans are just gonna carry the it's torch. Sad. It's very sad. I f I feel so 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 sad um, because I let's just put it this way: I watched Star Trek when I was a five-year-old boy with my dad. That's what our family time was like, sitting in front of the telly, mm -hmm. and I was watching Star Trek with my older brother and my dad. And I learned from Captain Kirk that bravado and this, uh, this outward bravery would get you only so far. I learned from Mr. Spock that being cool as a cucumber, being smarter, being logical, and figuring things out would get you a lot further. That's what I learned when I was a kid watching Star Trek. Really? That is, I really, really, really did learn that. I did. And it, it stuck with me. And that's why the character of... Mr. Spock was always so resonant with me personally. Really, very much You so. look like Mr. Spock of all my friends. Do I? You're tall and pointy-eared, and you speak eloquently. Oh, so. yeah. But I have a tendency to pontificate, which is something a Vulcan would never do. That was something I always loved about Vulcans. They were very concise. Very concise. In, and quite powerful in the way they spoke. Really, really awesome. Ah, we have we have a possibility of Spike. I mean Skype. Ah, did I say Spike? Spike? <laughs> Spock was very entish, says Jeffrey Lindsay in the chat room. Hello, Jeffrey, and hello, North Runner. Hello, Pete, and and uh, oh, well, look, there's Sarah Swift, there's Stephanie, and there's Tyler. You streamer eight zero two eight one. Northerner Lots of says, "Is the AC on high everybody. and meltdown? You guys are dressed for New England autumn weather." No, if you saw the news today, the the beaches were snowed over. There were there were hail snowmen at Huntington Beach this morning. There was hail on the beach. Was, I saw that on the it news. It was so cold yesterday yes, here in hail. Southern California that people hail. were making hail snowmen on the beach instead of a carrot for a nose. They were holding a surfboard. It was, it's wonderful. Look it up. The hail snowmen here in L.A. This just this morning. It's, it's kind of cold. It's crazy talk, and it's you know, it's quite interesting. You you we had a heat wave 
through most of December and January. It was unseasonably warm through December and January. And then, all of a sudden now, in late, late February, early March, it gets really wintry again, at least by our standards of what an L.A. winter is. You know, we were just talking, I was just meeting up with some, some folks that ha uh, that came to uh, L.A. for the for the one last party last week, mm. and I had no idea this happened, but at the same time, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of last weekend was the l final Xena Warrior Princess Con in Burbank, at the Burbank Marriott. Really? It was going on. Lucy Lawless was there. I didn't know that there was ongoing Everybody Xena was there. cons. Well, it's the last one. I didn't know it was ongoing. And and this was it. So and I know a lot about the local so conventions. So a few of our attendees actually went to the Xena con during the day. Really? And then, and then came to the Hobbit con, uh, to our Hobbit party. To our party? Oh, that's cool. That's um, actually very cool. And I, 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 my first question was, I thought Dino Gorman got his start in Xena. A lot of our friends who worked down there on that TV show got their start on Xena. I believe Craig Parker, not Dino Gorman, but I think Craig really? Parker got his start on uh, Xena. I'm gonna have to look this up. Thank you, IMDB. IMDB. Thank you, IMDB, for explaining everything in the world to me. Hmm. Bruce Hopkins was there? Did Bruce Hopkins go to Xenacon? Really? I did not know that. That would be amazing. I, I I would like Kelly to come into part of our show. Wouldn't hello there. That'd I, be wonderful. That'd be wonderful if Kelly can come in. You know, she, her and uh, Kelly and Alex used to watch the show before they were the Happy Hobbits. They were just chatters in our chat room, and then they came to L.A. one time to go to Disneyland. And like, we love your show. Can we come meet you? Yes. And fast forward, and look what happens. They're more popular than us. <laughs> every, everybody knows just their a name. little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> I'm now, not what, what were we looking up on IMDb? Just we, were lo ago? we were looking up Xena Warrior Princess. Oh, okay, and yes. Why Bruce Hopkins, Dino Gorman, uh, uh, Carl Urban was in Hercules and yes. or Xena. Yes, Carl Urban definitely. Carl Urban. There you go. Here's the Judge full cast. Judge Dredd. I am looking so, at so a ton of Lord of the Rings people were in lots Xena. Lots and lots and lots. Martin Sokas. Martin Sokas, who played Galadriel's husband, or is that the appropriate word? Uh, Celeborn. Celeborn, who we always make fun of by saying, you know, <laughs> Bye, Sarah. Eight, eight that are here, yet nine set forth from Rivendell. Where is Gandalf? That guy? Hey, who, I very much want who, to who meet who him. Who played the mouth that of Sauron? That was Martin Sokas. Who played the mouth of Sauron? Oh, the mouth of Sauron. That was an Australian actor. Bruce. Uh, something, something. Not Bruce Campbell, but a different Bruce. Not Bruce Hopkins. No, a different Bruce. Oh, we'll look him up. But uh, but but that Bruce was also in the third Star Wars film. He was the guy with the stripes before you meet... Uh, uh, actually, Bruce Hopkins was on four episodes of Xena. Bruce Hopkins was on Xena? Four episodes of Xena so as he, a bartender. So he doubled playing up. Playing a bartender, we yes. Fl we, flew <laughs> we flew Bruce Hopkins out here, and he, he doubled it. He was it. able to do both. You're welcome. <laughs> Actually, yeah, indeed. Yeah. Okay, who else? Craig, yeah, Craig Parker was on three episodes playing Bellerophon. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Keep texting us at the hotline, 530-64-FRODO. You can also uh, message us on Skype, uh, the One Ring Net, uh, and we'll open the phone lines in a little bit. Um, so, p s s so many names. So many Is people. Is it Celeborn? Celeborn or Celeborn? Celeborn. Celeborn. Hey, if, you, if you're reading Tolkien... This is a, a little elvish note to all of our fans. If you're reading Tolkien, and the name, or the person's name, or the place name is elvish, and you have a vowel immediately after the letter C, it's not going to be pronounced C like cement. If it were elvish, it would be cement. The letter C takes a hard K sound when immediately followed by a vowel. The best example is Celeborn, which is not Celeborn. I know, you want to say it like cement. Wait, who's you the, want to say the word who, cement, you want to say celeborn, but it's never that, it's celeborn. Who's the guy in... Uh, Watch your Elvish, I'm telling you guys. Who's, what's, what's the guy in... Uh, oh, the and Man Lawrence, Lawrence Makaore. He was actually in Xena as well. What, what, uh, wow. What, what, who's, the, who's the character in the new Middle Earth game? Uh, that 
would be Celebrimbor. Celebrimbor. Yes, is same, from same, Celeborn. same rules of pronunciation. When you have the letter C at the beginning of an Elvish word, Celebrimbor. It's Celebrimbor or Celeborn. There's it's never C. Uh, there's a new expansion. Let's, pack let's that. talk about Celtics. Do people say Boston Celtics all the time? Yeah. But they say it by mistake. The word is Celtic. That's when you're talking about the language. The language, the people, Celtic. But Celtic this, artwork, I Celtic always, design. Pr- I, I always thought Americans the, the have been pers- mispronouncing the word Celtics like that forever. I thought it was forever. a personal pronoun. If, you, if you're using a personal pronoun, it's Celtic. And if you're using the uh, 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 adjective or, or noun, it's Celtic. And also, also and to so say... And so Celebrimbor and, and Celeborn make sense. They don't make sense in Tolkien's world. That's okay. not how it's pronounced. I'm telling you. And yes... You were correct. I was wrong this time. Dino Gorman did appear on Xena Warrior Princess for two episodes, playing none other than Homer, the great poet Homer, who created Wait, but, uh, no, the I, Iliad and the Odyssey. Who had a major role, not just like a bit part, but who who was in a lot of episodes from Lord of the Rings? Uh, uh, wasn't there a couple Lord of the Rings actors that, that were like... Manu Bennett was even in it. Wow, I can't believe it. Uh, William Kircher, he was in one episode of Xena. Everybody, everybody from The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings must have had some crisscrossing intersection with the Xena Warrior Princess show. You know, I, I remember when they were I'm shooting... I'm so surprised I didn't know about that, that con that was happening all those years. I know. Right under my nose. And it was know, happening. I didn't know it was there. Yeah. How about that? That's why, Well, we were, we were pretty preoccupied last weekend with setting up the party. Yes. Yes, we were. Uh, which made it happen quite a bit. Uh, you, you guys made it happen for everybody. I mean, everybody that that contributed to the Indiegogo campaign were still sending out yes. all the rewards. Also, Calabrian. That's also correct. Also, uh, pronounce that right, Calabrian. Yes. And and you know that some of the stories coming out that I had no idea was happening until after the fact. I was working so hard on the live stream with the two channels that I didn't get to really say hi to anybody. But the wonderful stories like this girl Catherine. Who has some debilitating disease, that a, a, a rare dysfunctional disease or something? Mm-hmm. And you saw her in a wheelchair, and yes. she had and a her, mask on. And her once guest mask, while. yes. But the, the, she was enjoying the party. Like but the anybody. fact that she was, she, yeah. she was there, and yeah. she was dancing on the floor in her wheelchair, and everybody came up to take a picture. I mean, just, just made her, 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 her night, her week, her month, her year, her life. Uh, and it's stories like that, and she's not the only one. There were several people that are, are dealing with uh, dealing with stuff that you know uh, limits their lifestyle, and they uh, a lot of people made the effort to come to the party, and just had a great time. And, Indeed, they did. And that's why we do this. It's... We invited Leonard Nimoy as well, but of course, his health had been failing uh, for uh, a bit of time. And he had already gone into the hospital uh, and to get direct hospital care by the time our party had rolled around. Um, but he had been uh, invited in advance, much in advance. Um, and it's just so sad. Um, I'm going to miss you, Leonard Nimoy. Hey, put it this way. God forbid, but when William Shatner dies, the whole country is going to have like a Michael Jackson moment. There will be like a moment where everyone just goes, oh gosh, one of our greatest icons of American culture gone. You know, it's going to be really very sad. And I hope that doesn't happen for decades and decades and decades because we love Bill Shatner. You know, even though I make a few jokes about him directing Star Trek V, I, I still love Bill Shatner. And I was just depressed as all hell when we lost DeForest Kelly. Yeah. That hit me hard. Really? When DeForest Kelly was gone, oh, that hit me so hard because Dr. McCoy was such a great, great, great character. And also similar uh, trajectory as an actor, DeForest Kelly did westerns, black and white westerns, just like Leonard Nimoy had been appearing on Gunsmoke and other shows like that before getting on Star Trek. You know, at the time it was the only game in town, and these actors working for CBS they were happy to get those jobs, jumping right out of one genre, cowboys and Indians and the Great American West, and then doing. Cowboys and Indians in the great intergalactic space. Mm-hmm. Different genre, same type of, you know, somewhat uh, uh, pulpy stories, you know, but Roddenberry was just so brilliant in pulling that all together. Um, it, it's amazing. We're watching the, the chat room both on Ustream and on irc.theonering.net. Yes. Barliament's chat. 
Uh, we got so much chat going on. It, There's it, quite a bit. It's ridiculous. Did someone say Figgy? Hi, Figgy. Welcome to the show, Figgy. It's great to see a lot of our regulars in both chat rooms. Wow. These chat rooms are going. There's Elrenia. There's there's Demosthenes. Hello there. Our good friend all the way from Down Under. Good to see you, Demosthenes, on our show yet again. Overall, the success of the One Ring.net over these past 15 years has brought up a lot of conversation among all of us about where we're going to go for the next 15 years. That's right. We had a lot of conversation. Um, I myself, I've been absent from the conversation because I had my family, particularly my mom, I had my mom visiting with me for an entire week after the party, so I couldn't get back to myself. I stayed off the grid and just kept visiting with mom and taking her places and you know we went to go see some original Star Trek locations? Really? I took my mom to visit the Mulholland Dam which is right up above um, uh, yeah. the right above Whitley Heights above the Hollywood Hills. That's right. Just a stone's throw from where we are here at Meltdown Comics. Up there they shot a beautiful beautiful outdoor setting for a green verdant green world which was like you know uh, a planet that Kirk and Spock were discovering and it was really 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 cool I, uh, I tweeted a picture um, uh, this is what I'm gonna show you um, I, maybe I can bring it over to the camera and I can show you guys at home as well but um, my mom she was very happy to see this place this was where the paradise syndrome was shot and there's yes. the very familiar Mulholland Dam. Bridge, yeah. Yeah, with and there's nothing out there but pine trees. No. And a beautiful lake. Yeah. And so Paramount was like, let's shoot here. Even though we're in the heart of Los Angeles, it looks like we're somewhere else. Nothing but pine forests and a beautiful rippling lake about 2,400 feet above sea level. The Mulholland Dam created a unique reservoir. It's called Lake Hollywood. And it's right up there. And there's bears on the dam. See that? The bear, that grizzly bear that's on the California state flag? Yeah. There's dozens and dozens of bears on the Mulholland Dam. You've seen them before, haven't you? Yep. Yeah. So, well, we were just talking about Leonard Nimoy, and I said, let's go up here, and let's go see where the actors walked. And we went down the path to the exact shooting location where they shot that episode uh, all those years ago for the original series of Star Trek. And that episode was called The Paradise Syndrome. And it's kind of like, you can go all around New Zealand, and you can use that wonderful guidebook to go to all the spots and see where everything was filmed in Peter Jackson's films. But when you live here in Hollywood, you can do the same thing with any old TV show that you love from the past. Oh, they filmed that here. Oh, look over here in the corner at Gardner and Sunset. That's where they've shot uh, scenes with uh, Harvey Keitel and John Travolta in Be Cool. Yeah, that's yeah, they right. shot those scenes right out here across the street from us. And while you were at the dam, I was across the street from Meltdown Comics is Barlamin and Butter... Uh, B uh, not Barlamin and Butterfield. Oh, it was Bonhams and Bonhams. Bonhams and Butterfields. Bonhams and Butterfields. Well, you might as well call it Barlamins. Yes, uh, <laughs> Bonhams and Butterfields. It's a major auction house, and every month they do a major auction of memorabilia or estate or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, and every month they this, do a free appraisal day. Is that when you went? That's right. So, that's when you went. Uh, this weekend... Uh, Saturday, at Friday and Saturday, they had a preview day, and then Sunday was the auction. So this this last weekend, uh, they had a movie memorabilia. Yeah. And they had a ton of stuff, like a Star Wars Revenge of the Jedi poster, a lot of uh, animation cells from Walt Disney. Oh, and, gosh, how cool. And, 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 look what, and look at this. They had on display, opening bid, $1,800. Original Return of the King clapboard. Wowzer, browser, and that's that's written in 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 permanent markers. So R K three seven one P. So this is an original Return of the King clapper board. You know the thing uh, that was uh, auctioned off yesterday. I don't know how much it went for. Twenty four frames per second. But that that that's the thirty two millimeter lens. And when I posted a picture of that on Instagram, we we instantly got an email saying, "Hey, guess what, guys? That scene." That is written in permanent Sharpie marker. Yes. On that clapperboard that's being that was just auctioned off that I just saw and took a picture of. Yes. Return of the King. That was Christopher Lee's final shooting day. Is that, that what was, that was? That was his last scene. Christopher Lee's final scene. Oh, that must have been when they were shooting the spike when he was falling off the top of the tower 
that dies on that spiky wheel. No, that was shot in New Zealand with stunt doubles. He was in England. He never left England. No, but this isn't Hobbit. This is Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Christopher Lee was in New Zealand for years shooting. Was he? Yes. I thought he shot everything in England. Only for the Hobbit films. Oh. Only in his... Now that... Well, now they, that Sir, you know, they, they shot, they shot Sir hit. Count Dooku is getting up in the years, he couldn't travel, so for the sake of Ian Holm and for the sake of Christopher Lee, they took a special second unit to London. But for all Lord of the Rings, Christopher Lee was in Wellington with one everyone the, else. But one of the first things they shot was actually one of his last scenes. It, it, one of the first things they shot on Lord of the Rings was I'm gonna put these, Saruman... Uh, uh, We're going to bring this up to the camera. I'm going to show you guys. Well, just pictures. check our Twitter. You can ch you can check our Twitter because we've already posted it. Yeah, well, I'm going to show anyways because you haven't we haven't tweeted this picture of my it's mom. It's going to be out of focus. No, it's not. It's going to be great. See that clapboard, guys? We're so manual here. Yeah, there is that clapboard. That was the original. That is Christopher Lee's final shooting day on Return of the King on the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. How much did this sell for? Its opening bid was eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred dollars for the original. So I, that was its opening bid. I don't know how much it actually went for. And here's a picture. This is even more fun. This is a picture of my mom. There's mom. Hi, mom. Hey, mom. That's mom at the Mulholland Dam, up there where the beautiful, beautiful Hollywood Reservoir is where they shot classic episodes of the original series of Star Trek with William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy and DeForest Kelly. Miss those guys. All right, good stuff. You guys? But you know what else they had on display? They had so many animation cells and original Walt Disney uh, contracts and signatures and, and like notes, letters of note from the hand of Walt Disney himself, not scribed by his assistant, but personally handwritten and, and you know, signed by Walt. And yes. his handwriting, Walt Disney's handwriting, is is exactly as you see on the logo. On the logo, it's, it's loopy and curvy. He that's he yeah he made those big letters. Yeah. And 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 it was amazing to see because he wrote entire notes in this wonderful script. Yes, that uh, that, that, that was just his writing that became yes. became so identifiable, and and so it was interesting to see that because I saw that on thir on Friday, right? Yes. Yesterday in a super secret location. Which I can't reveal. I saw. He'll tell me off stage, but he can't reveal it live now. I saw an original manuscript written, authenticated, everything, uh, from the hand of Tolkien. And Tolkien's writing reminded me exactly like Walt Disney's writing. Yes? The, 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 there was a quality of penmanship. Yes and call calligraphy and penmanship uh, not just with his signature because Tolkien has a very uh, noticeable signature he does but, but his letters of note mm -hmm. uh, are, 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 are I hold in the same Look at that. caliber as Walt Disney's writing Tolkien's script and, and well Tolkien's ability to do calligraphy or any penmanship in general is really fantastic look at that but, but, but beyond that. that he's got he's, you know look at a personal note that that he's not trying to attach to Lord of the Rings, just just you know like, hey honey, I love you. Uh, his penmanship is amazing. Yeah, and take what, a look. Yeah. What, what really put what really puts it into perspective is um, when uh, when did uh, when did Tolkien die? Let's show. Nineteen seventy four. Seventy three. Seventy three. When did Walt Disney die? Um, good question. I think it was sixty seven or sixty eight. Good question. Tolkien lived longer than Walt Disney. So they were kind of cut from the same cloth. They saw the same success at the same time. And in many ways... 1973. Yes. 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 His wife died in 71. And he... And His wife died in 71. So he, Tolkien lived longer than Disney. And, th and they wanted were, to leave right they after. They were her. competitors in the same world at the same time. Tolkien was competing for the minds of readers... And Walt Disney was the technologist that was competing for the eyes and hearts of viewers. And so they were just approaching everything from, from two different perspectives. Tolkien was of the old world. I'm going to teach at a professor. Uh, I'm going to be a professor at Oxford, and I'm going to write books, and I want nothing to do with movies or cartoons or TV or music or whatever. And yes. Disney took the opposite thing. He's like, you know, I'm not, I don't want to write books or anything. I want to do... Uh, 
movies and TV shows and theme parks. Indeed. Uh, and so they were, they, they, you know, they but they lived at the same time. And I, I want people to have the pr remember this perspective, is that two of the giants of sci-fi yeah, lived you, at the same time. Uh, yeah, you, would you like a chair? No, I just wanted to talk to Justin for a second. Yeah, hey. Wonderful things happen when BRB. we're live. Well, you're going to be right back, and I'm going to go up to the audience, and I'm going to show you guys what Tolkien's handwriting looks like in a personal note written to Merton College. You're Look getting up again? Yeah, of course I am. Just tweet it. I will, but I want to just, show everyone. Just tweet it. This is going to be on the archive. You guys, check this out. You want to see something really cool? He wants to keep getting up. That's this why is I what Tolkien's handwriting looks like. Super cool, huh? That's why I sit in this chair. Really, 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 really cool. Come here, come here, come here. I can't read this. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Hello. Hello. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Okay, okay, okay. Hello, hello. Hi. Hey, say, chat room, say hello to Ellen Design. Luke is here. Hi. Ellen is here. Hi. Yay. Hi. Hi. Is it design or designs? Design. Design. Yes. Singular. Singular. You're only one woman. Exactly. I can only do so much. <laughs> how would how would you think of the party? I thought the party was awesome. What was your favorite part? Ooh, there were so many good things. I'd say probably Emerald Rose. Right? They always bring the house down. They were awesome. Everyone says that. Yeah. Everyone yeah. says that. They were totally And awesome. they made it a point to email the staff and say, you know, thank you for having the best lighting that we've had oh. at any gig in L.A. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So Emerald Rose are big fans of yours. Oh, that's awesome. Well, the feeling is definitely mutual. They were Did you great. meet a lot of people from the chat room at the party? I didn't have a chance. I was running around. Yeah, you and me to, both. Yeah, it was a lot of fixing things and making sure that everything was working correctly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some lights were getting tipped over, so we were fixing things <laughs> as the party was going along. The but later the party went, the more things got a little wavy. I, things did get pretty wavy, but it was <laughs> a lot of fun. It was a big so, party. It you, was. You have to expect little shenanigans from time to time at a party, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes, and there were a lot of shenanigans. The further <laughs> the <laughs> party went, the more interesting the shenanigans got, for sure. <laughs> We were just standing, at, at one point we were standing in the booth at the back of the house mm -hmm. and just um, overhearing some very interesting conversations as people were drinking more really? and more and really? more. Yeah, it, got, it oh. got quite interesting. It was a lot That's of fun, though. Funny. Yeah, it was great. Well, though. we know you're headed across town. You just I popped am. in to say yes, hi and, yes. and pick Didn't up mean something that I no. stole from you. No, photo, yeah. this is the best thing to do a live show and people just pop in and surprise. We, we do it all the time. Yeah, yeah. I heard yeah. It. Now you guys can put a face to a name in the chat. Hi, You're a regular. Yeah. I, I I am. Uh, yeah, and me and, and Sheepish Lion, and who, Sheepish who Lion. unfortunately can't quite join you quite as often <laughs> now because he has a new job. Yeah, well, um, But uh, new job is good. So job is he, good. he sends his love. He says hello to everybody in the chat. These Very guys good. have a beautiful, beautiful house. Um, in an area, it's just adjacent to Mount Washington, right? Yeah, Mount Washington Highland Park. It's kind of Gorgeous a, in the, the East L.A. Uh, area um, of this, Los Angeles. Michigan. Jeffrey Lindsay says, I love the tree branch shadows in the main oh, room. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yay. Glad you liked it. Yeah. See, I every little detail was noticed. That's awesome. That's awesome. There are some great photos, by the way, uh, if these guys haven't mentioned it, on the OneRing.net. Um, homepage they have a link to all the professional photographers mm -hmm. photos and some of them are fantastic yeah. so yeah definitely check them out we so. hi Dwina <laughs> hi Dwina yes hey. Dwina's in there what? Jeffrey Lindsay was at the party so many good people Very well good I know folks. you're pressed for time and trying to but get before, to you, go, yeah, yeah, before yes. you leave yeah. before you leave yes yes you've you've seen that little documentary film and have some have a shot of that <laughs> nice. here we go have, have a shot of that white rock mm -hmm. you've seen this documentary little film that we've done ringers yes absolutely well i have not actually seen the movie but i've heard a lot about it i so. have i know it looks a little raggy but that's because you know that's what happens to cellophane but right. as as a gift from the staff of the one ring .net. for Ellen, we have an actual copy of Ringer's Lord of the Fans. Yay! Starring Dominic Monaghan. Star Dom and, Dom. I'll, and we'll and get Dom to like autograph it for you when next time yes. he's in town. Yes, would okay. love that. This is a gift for you. Fantastic. From, Thank you from so the one ring. Yes, you did such a fantastic job. Thank you. you know, there was nobody else we wanted to have people work with our party but fans of Tolkien. Right, and right. And this lovely lady 
who's coming to our parties and our Bilbo Baggins picnic. And, and everyone, and, 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 uh, right? I've got my my, my, petite my, my petite Hobbit shirt. Yeah. On, my Hobbit my shirt, favorite. So right? You were an ideal fit. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Super good. Absolutely loved it. Thank you so much for uh, thank you for letting me be a part of it. It was wonderful. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still enamored with all, it, everything it was it was yeah. a great time it was a magical night yes. and I'm, I'm glad that everybody was able to be a part of it so it was. anyways thank you so much thank you for stopping by yes i absolutely. think that's your thing over there my cable it is my cable over perfect. there perfect actually okay so yes that's mine i don't have your Good light night. i couldn't find the light it's but it's okay it's, yeah it um, happens it happens it's part of luckily the, the fans gave us forty thousand extra dollars to cover nice. incidentals on the indiegogo campaign yay oh, go fans Woo! thank you that is a, a wonderful thing yes so is it cool to put this together like yeah this? that's totally fine okay. i will take care of that so tools go, of the trade tools of the trade tools yes the trade. <laughs> <laughs> we're still uh dealing with the party so but that's, that's okay. right so Thank you for this. I've, I definitely, I've my been pleasure. so curious about this uh, Show them your movie. purse. Oh my gosh. Oh yes, my my funny Star yes. Wars purse. That's so cool. Um, with, That's awesome. With my little robot guy With there. a droid. Yeah. That's so cute. <laughs> from my mom. Let's have a movie night sometime. Yes. Not I'm, even. I'm totally down with even that. Even Jure hasn't seen this movie. What? I know, really. What? I know lots Crazy. of my friends. Crazy. Okay. Awesome to see your body. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for letting me crash the party. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Okay, we've got, well, we've got a show that's almost over. Thanks bye for bye. coming to pick it up. Bye. Ellen, lovely to see you. Lovely yes. to see you, too. Yeah, cheers. Bye. We'll see you next time. We'll see you in the chat. Everyone, everyone in the chat room is going, oh, God, Ellen, yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so now we have switched places. We have switched magnetic poles. But we're still getting... North and south, south and north magnetic poles. But we're still getting uh, things on the chat. So text us, 53064-FRODO. Uh, Can you read this? As, as exquisite as Tolkien's handwriting is, I can't read what he's saying. Uh, Gala? Gala? Uh... That's because he's not writing in English. Often, Midden, is that Welsh? I think it's Welsh. You can't read Welsh. We need Roy Tolkien here to help us with that. Just can't bloody read Welsh. Anyways. We got a, a question in the chat. If, uh, if I come, if I ever get a chance to come to LA, would I be able to be on the show? Yes. Pippin! Yes! Of, of course. course! Yes, Pippin! Yes. Of course! You never know what's going to happen on the show. The Happy Hoppets came to LA for their first time. They came on the show, and now look at them. Like, you never know what's going to happen if you come on our show. So, be warned. You <laughs> might get some fans. Yes. You might. You might indeed. Well, this is funny. I appreciate, um, North Runner, Pete. So good to see you at the party. And uh, what a fun night that was. And he says he misses the camera chat thing from Stickcam. Remember know, that little nobody, feature we no, had? Nobody else does that. I mean, uh, you That's now a fun little feature. You now used to do it, and now they don't. Like, nobody does. I, I want to see people's faces. Remember when everybody had to have a hat to, to turn the, we, we like, you had to have a hat to be on the video chat. Yes, <laughs> yes, we did that for half a minute. That was very, very funny. Um, oh, gosh dang it, it went right to an ad right as they said hello. Well. This happens. Um, that's okay. We're sorry about the ads, but, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So that's why we have ads. So, you, you know, and, and, and it's funny because uh, I was Googling Leonard Nimoy quotes, and, and one of the first hits on Google was, Ringer's Lord of the Fans. Yes! And it's so weird yes. because I actually... How funny. You know, when you search for a name, it comes in bold, like the, the in the thing. Uh, and so it was so weird to see uh, on a Google search result... Leonard Nimoy and Justin Sewell on a Google search result together. Side by side. Like, that's wild. It is wild. Oh, we have Skypes calling him. There's a Skype. Why isn't it ringing my phone? Hey, let's try it again. If you want to Skype and say hello, I think we're missing Max, our, one of our regulars. We're missing... um. A couple of other people. Uh, I'm missing Kelly. I love it when Kelly and Alex stop in to chat with us. Right. As much as I like uh, any surprise visitors. But, you We've know, had Alex, quite a few... Alex is in college now, and, like, everybody's, like, people get new jobs and new new classes, and it's just, uh, uh, it's out of control. Yes, indeed. Group video chat would be great for Torn Tuesday. Yes. We're, we're, we, we'd love to. I've put the call out to everybody. Uh, 
that if someone has it you know it's also been really hard creating a group photo gallery with 500 guests at the party and everybody took great photos and I've seen some of them on Flickr and Instagram some of our professional photographers posted on and a bunch on Facebook and and Twitter uh, and I just want to create one photo gallery that gets all the photos in one place and, yes. and it's hard to find a website or a web service that does that and so we've been experimenting with a few different photo gallery options because I want to do this going forward. Every time we do a panel or a party like the Lake Town Luau or, or anything going forward, I would love to share in all the photos. So are you doing your Craigslist while you're on the show? Nope. Absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely that, not. He, Cliff is doing Craigslist. No, I'm not. Instead of talking to you, this guys. is hardcore important. These bit look, look. Craigslist is important. This this particular thing has something to do with a secret Tolkien project that we're not even mentioning just yet. Uh, it's a secret Tolkien project, and so everything secret. has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. Uh, we've missed another Skype call. Well, if anybody wants to Skype with us before we, you know, wrap up the show, now is the best time to do it. Yes, please do. Yes, and say hello to all of us. Oh, look, on the hotline, which is area code. I'm not getting, uh, I'm Again? Not getting the calls. Let's, What's our area code? Let's see here. Was let's anyone see. turned away at the door? No. You mean at the, at the party? I don't think anyone was... Um... Oh, look, there's Ellen. Ellen was just saying, I'm here at Meltdown. Where are you? <laughs> Hi, who's calling? Hold on, well, I hello. can't hear you. Hi there. I can't hear you. Hold on. Hello? No, I still can't hear you. Hold on. Microphone? No, that's mute. No headset detected. How come I can't hear anything? You look great. I mean, the video signal is great, but we should hopefully get some sound. No headset detected. There's no... Mute's not on. Uh, Volume's up. You know what? Hold on. I'm going to log out, then log back in. Call us back in a sec. Okay. Kay. Yes. Okay, that's nice. You guys are really wonderful to be, you know, interacting with us. Pippin, that's a sweet message. Um, yes, when a person who made a difference dies, it gives you a chance to think of those who left this world. Yeah. I am always reminded of that little conversation that Gandalf and Pippin are having during the Battle of Minas Tirith, where Pippin is very afraid and... They don't make it easy and, to sign out. And Gandalf tries to, um... Gandalf tries to reassure him about the afterlife not being such a bad thing. And it's that, that dialogue about, um... That dialogue about passing beyond the gray rain curtain lifts and the endless fields of green. Uh, just an exact quote from Tolkien that is so beautifully presented by Ian McKellen. And I'm always touched by that, that moment of, of dialogue. Um, a lot of people die in the Lord of the Rings. All lots right, and lots of people die. Nobody I seems to try, die in The Hobbit. Try Skyping again. <laughs> try Skyping again. Nobody ever seems to die in the Hobbit films until you get to the end. Nobody died in the Hobbit films. Until the end of the third film. That's right. Like, but, by, by, by the middle of the first Lord of the Rings films, we had known death. How about, how about watching all six films in their own internal order? If that's the case, and people start to watch, or younger people even watch The Hobbit, which are gentle, much more gentle films, and they advance through six films, and by the time they end up to the third Hobbit film, there's real strong death scenes, and then in The Lord of the Rings, it's death, 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 death. Thematically, Professor Tolkien actually said that's what the book is about. The book is about death and the pursuit of deathlessness. All right, let's that's try like thematically what Lord of the Rings is about. So, don't you think it's appropriate that there were less people dying in a certain way? Can I hear you now? Because if you watch all six films from Hobbit through... I can't hear you. Hold on. Um, hello. Welcome to Skype. I see... We're about to bring a Skype caller in. But I, I think I think there I might see... be an appropriate level that... of avoiding death in the early Hobbit films. What is And then really Skype dealing today? with it in a big way with the later uh, story arc because I totally can't hear anything. That's kind of how Tolkien handled it uh, as thematic. There's a mute button. There's a no. Uh, I can add people to the call. Uh, my dear, no. You're on Skype, and I see you visually, 
but do you have your microphone turned on on your end? That might be one of the things. Need to have your microphone turned on. How do I go back to this? Can Pippin be you're added already, to Skype, por favor? You're already on a call. I'm Justin, on a call. it's Pippin. Where? Come on. I can't hear you. I I see your face. See, everyone sees your face, but I can't hear you. Nobody can hear you. And it's Are lovely. Are you muted? Did you hit the mute button? No. No, it's lovely to see you. You can look you great. Can you hear Can you hear me now? You can't hear me. I hit mute. Now I hit unmute. Try that again. Oh yeah, turn that volume up. No, I can't hear you that way. I have no idea. I don't know why this isn't working. It's got to be on your end because we just tried calling on iPad and now on the iPhone and there's I can't hear you. No. I can see your mouth move. Still. Uh -huh. I can't hear you. Ah! Oh. Well, uh, Skype problems notwithstanding. Let me ah. let me turn on my Skype on my device and let's right, try it this way. All right, we're gonna try this again. So he's he's gonna try Skype on his phone. I have another. So yeah. Call us back in a sec. I have another device that's working fine. It is um, it's not on mute, and it always works when we get calls from Emily. Where's our dear Emily, Stargate Geek? She's not with us. I know, right? Oh, and. I don't have any comments about PJ's video, the the special PJ video that we he shared at the tired. one party. He looks tired. I didn't say I didn't see it because I was busy on camera doing other things around the stage and other times. It was so hard to keep that a secret. There were only three people that knew about that video. It was so hard to keep that. A okay, secret. Skype is on now. Who should I call? Call us back. Well, I, I'm on my account. I don't have the One Ring Skype open. I'm on my Skype account. So, so open the One Ring account. Let's do that. Okay. Let's open up. Have they changed this so many times. Sign out. Okay, I'm signing out of Skype and I'm going to sign in as the One Ring. Here. It's it's going to be different. What's this? The One Ring Net? That's right. The One Ring Net. All one word. The One Ring Net. And I'll let you type that in. Very good. We're about to re-log into Skype and get another Skype caller to come in. Thank you for bearing with us while we deal with a little bit of a tech issue. Here. If oh, this nice. one doesn't work, then it's got to be your phone and your Skype. Okay, here we go. Oh, Tova. Was that you just calling Tova? That's right. Okay, let me try to reach you right now, dear. Missed call. Pippin loves to Skype in. Let's, let's, let's try to make it. Hey! Here we go. Sounds good to me. Hold on. Connecting. 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 Let's see how strong the Sprint 3G network is today. Since I'm not on 4G LTE. Uh, calling. Sarah's calling. All right, Sarah. Hey there. Ah, there's Pippin. Hi, Pip. Hey there, dear. How are you? Hey, Doug. I'm good. Are you there, love? What? Are you there, dear? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you just great. Do you hear us just fine? Yeah, I can hear. All right, good stuff. Good to see you. That's my picture in picture. I... <laughs> well, I'm glad I was able to get on before I went to add. Yes. Yeah, before... awesome. Hey, hey there. Lovely to see you. And I love that warm hat. It must be keeping you warm there, that hat. Yeah, we just got a snowstorm and now it's really cold, so it is pretty nice. <laughs> How large was the hail we had on the beach? Very big. Do you know, Professor Tolkien is so good at describing the weather and how certain aspects of the weather are actual, she you know, is. extensions of power from other wizards or other people uh, uh, and uh, uh, entities. In Middle Earth, there's a whole lot of weather going on, but I don't remember him describing hail or a hailstorm. Do you? And, and I've read everything by Tolkien inside and out, and I don't once remember him describing hail. But I'll have to look that up and see if I can find a reference. Um, it's a nightmare when you get hailstones as big as your skull, like this. Look at the size of this. Imagine a ball of hail the size of a grapefruit. Can you imagine? It's devastating. 
When it hits your car, your car's destroyed. Much less you. How are you? I hope. I think they had bigger ones in North Dakota a while ago. They do. Oh yeah, North Dakota is just a weird place. For hail, yeah. So I'm, I'm. You're snowed in. Do you get a snow day? No, we only got like four inches. That's not bad. You can. Oh, no. uh, the, the L.A. would shut down if there were four inches of anything. <laughs> Funny. Everyone else has more snow than we do. We've only had about 15 inches since November. Maybe, Only maybe less. 15. Well, that's 15 inches over the last five years here. <laughs> yeah. We need the snow in the upper elevations of the, the high Sierras, the Sierra Mountains up in California, because that snowpack represents where we get our drinking water from. The, the, for the record, Pippin is wearing a red and black hat. Yep. And it's a ski-type hat. So the chat room is wondering if you're wearing a hat. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yep. it's an insignia for my school. Oh, it's a school uh, emblem. Yes. Cool. Awesome. So, how are you? What's your favorite Le Leonard Nimoy movie? Yeah, what's your favorite Leonard Nimoy moment? Any moment. Any movie well, or TV I've, show. I think, I've only, I think I've only seen him in the newer reboots of Star Trek. I don't yeah. know if I've seen him in anything else. Did you I'm see Transformers? Trekkie? Transformers 3. My first one. I don't oh. like them. I don't like anything Michael Bay makes. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Thank geez. you. Hey, some solidarity from you, girl. Uh, Thank you for that. Okay, uh, moving on. Highly recommended. You've seen Disney's Atlantis, the animated film? I think so. Yeah, Michael J. I don't Fox. Like Disney all that much. My, Michael, no, that was the underwater one. I the underwater that. one. That's really, really, really good because it's like steampunk H.G. Wells. Oh, yeah, the steampunk one. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that one. You see, that Leonard Nimoy was the king of Atlantis. And, of course, uh, we also miss Michael Clark Duncan. He was in that film as well. That's right. And I miss him. Um, a lot of great people who are gone. But um, my favorite, um, one of my favorite bits of Leonard Nimoy would be in Fringe. I loved watching Fringe. Because I was catching up on Denethor. For me, it was all about John Noble. Lots and lots and lots of John Noble. And I loved what Fringe was doing with its parallel universe story. And then all of a sudden we've got William Bell, who was played by Leonard Nimoy. So I was very happy fanboy. When I watched Fringe, I got the best of both worlds. I got my Star Trek fix and I got my John Noble Lord of the Rings fix. And I loved Fringe for that reason. It was good stuff. I don't watch TV very often. See? I've never even All the seen better. Fringe. I I don't either. I I think I saw one half of an episode once. <laughs> mm. Well, since you I have I'm I stopped at episode 7 on season 1 of uh, of Breaking Bad and that's really about it. <laughs> that's about yeah. it. Uh, all right, it. funny. It's so good to see you again on the on the video chat. I very miss good. the days where we we could see you every week. I do too. Yeah, it's nice to be able to call in. Yes. Hopefully Eric and I will be able to somehow get over it at some point, but we don't know. Yes, if you ever make your way here, yes. make sure you're here on Tuesday in Hollywood. We'll have a great time. We'll have a really good time. I know that you two would, would enjoy meeting us, so yeah, if we're in even in California, we'd be coming over, because if I do go to California, I'd be visiting my uncle, because he lives in San Diego. Perfect. And if we so do the, have a decent it, stop to go and then come down here for the day. And everybody wants to come to Hollywood. And if we if, if we do the road to Dragon Con again this year, I don't see why we couldn't try to make it up your way as well. Yes. I live two hours away from where I from where I live now, so I don't think you'd be coming all the way up here. We have to hit some states that we've never hit before, and North Dakota and Minnesota no, are two of those. I don't know if you'd be going through St. Cloud though, so I'd, I wouldn't know. We can we'll, we'll, we can make the arrangements. We can always find a reason. This guy will always find a reason to detour on the road to Dragon Con. It it will pretend find like it's reason. going through Kar Karad, Karad, Karad the mountain. Karathras. Anyways, thanks for calling. We get another calls here. Lovely to get your call on Skype. Thank you, Pippin. And yes, uh, Tolkienesque, you should try skyping one more time. We're gonna get her on and say goodnight. Thank you, Pip. 
Right? We'll catch up with you later. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye, love. Thank you. So awesome to see. Okay, people. very good. I missed the video chat. Portion Me too. Of Man, that was so. That was ahead. That was ahead of his time. How was the quality of this call? Should I read it? It's like rating your Uber driver. Four out of five stars. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Good. Thanks for your feedback. Thanks, Skype. So we'll take we'll take one more call and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up the show. But e Tova, e I'm gonna try right now. It it, it didn't work, Here but we we're gonna go. try it right now. Hey, I think we might get better results this time. Are you there, dear? Hello? Nope. No? Nope. I don't hear or see anything. Oh, hey. Look, we're trying to reach you. That's token-esque, isn't it? Oh, well. Oh, well, nice try. Maybe maybe next week. Well, it's it's been a wonderful tribute to Leonard Nimoy, who was connected to Lord of the Rings in so many ways. Yes. Uh, besides singing the Ballad of Bilbo Baggins, he worked with Hugo Weaving, uh, and, mm -hmm. and he was just a friend of Ringers, and in fact, you you can see him in Ringers, Lord of the Fans. Yes. And uh, uh, you know, he's just uh, he wasn't just Star Trek, and and that was. That was the point, we, as the One Ring was trying to make, you know, with all these Star Trek tributes. That he wasn't yes. just Star Trek; he was a fans fan, and and he he really he led was. by example, and and uh, he was just so friendly to to people young and old. And uh, that's such a great memory and that you had of him. I love that story you told. Thank you, Justin. We're gonna we're gonna Thank miss you. Leonard Nimoy, and and uh, I miss him terribly let, already. Let's, uh, and you know we got a couple requests from people in the chat room. It's great, great to see some of these texts. Uh, people want to see a show about uh, all the different, all the stuff that was in the trailers that never made it into the trilogy. That's a good idea for a show. Yeah, they did mention so that, and I'm glad you brought that up. Yes. We're gonna have to do uh, some glad. research and pull pull those trailer clips, and, and uh, I, I like that. Idea. We're gonna have to call call through a lot of preview trailers, teaser trailers, because there was so much stuff. Sh that we thought was going to be in the films and we never got it. That's right. So much stuff. It will make an interesting uh, episode. I think so. Now, so and every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific here at Meltdown Comics in Hollywood, the center of geekdom, home of Nerdist, and the home of Meltdown. And the Meltdown show is entering its second season on Comedy Central. Indeed it is. I mean, when was the last time you heard an actual comic book shop get on a TV show? And, and, and it's named the show. Like, you, we were here first. Yes, we Torn, were. Torn's been here first. You guys are lovely. It is really great to have you with us again on this weekly uh, chat about all things Tolkien. That's right. And never forget that you may think your love of a certain fandom, your little circle of fandom, whether you love Harry Potter or whether you love Insurgent or if you're in, just deeply in love with uh, the Game of Thrones, whatever your fandom is, Never forget that there's always surprising connections between your storytellers and your actors that you love so much, and they intersect with other fandoms all the time. That's always. Right. It's especially true, as we were talking about Xena, because that's a big fandom that right. had everybody from our Lord that's of the Rings team on it. And now, and I was just talking about Fringe. You know, this recent show, which has a great intersection of Leonard Nimoy and, and John Noble, our very own crazy Denethor, who can't seem to, you know, he, he's not missing a beat. He's on Sleepy Hollow now. Yeah, big, but so keep in mind and do some exploring. My recommendation is for you guys to go onto IMDb or even go to the library and take, you know, take a look at some books or movies and you'll find intersections between some of your favorite you know, science fiction and your favorite fantasy, all these people come together and have worked together. The biggest joke that we're going to change this year, Six Degrees of Hugo Weaving. That's going to be our 2015. We need to make I a meme. It. We need a meme. No, don't, you don't we? You we don't need a meme. Make memes. They just they just happen. Well, so it's you starting can't here. Force, you can't force anything. But thank you for joining us. Check out all the highlights from the One Last Party on YouTube. The entire live stream is there. Hollywood Show has uploaded their highlight video. Happy Hobbits are almost done with theirs. There's a ton of pictures to check out on the One Ring .net. That's right. And thank you so much for for staying with us. And we'll Indeed. keep on keeping on. A life is like a garden. Perfect moments can be had 
but not preserved, except in memory. To you, Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy. We love you and we miss you, sir. L-L-A-P. A very talented poet and musician and author and a very talented director and actor. Beloved Leonard Nimoy, farewell. Live long and prosper. Live long and pro... Well, not anymore. He did live long and he prospered. He did exactly as he always said to us. He very, very much did. We thank you, Leonard Nimoy, for bringing some humor and some elan. That favorite word of mine that I learned from Leonard Nimoy. That certain elan that you have as a director. And thank you for everything you've done. And farewell, Leonard. And so, thank you guys. Farewell to all the fans. Thank you for joining us on Torn Tuesday. That's right. Until next week, follow him on Justin's Big Idea. Follow me, Quick Beam 2000 And of course, check out all the information and good stuff we have on our Facebook timeline and on the main page of theonering.net. Thank you, guys, and good night. Until next time. Thanks, Ellen, for stopping by. Cheers. Bye, Ray. <laughs>